Elba apparently had a meeting with the president to discuss his future plans for the country, which included building a studio here in Ghana, as well as bringing his new movie here in Ghana. So he plans to only shoot a few days of the video here. But for him to consider this, big moves, big moves. Let's hear from him directly on what he had to say about this whole ordeal. His Excellency, nice to see you again. Um, Danny Dama and Tony Tego, my, my partners in um, our program to build film studios across Africa. Currently, we call it West African Studios, but that's because it's a working title. But we've been working at this for, you know, three or four years to raise a plan that, you know, puts a facility at the center of African filmmaking. There's a lot of African filmmaking, but the facilities around that are, are something that is lacking. In South Africa, they have a big facility. A lot of film production goes there. But quickly, as we're planning this, we realize that policy is where the actual groundwork needs to be laid. Um, you know, we've studied the models of obviously South Africa, who have an incredible incentive package. Then around Europe, obviously, Greece, Morocco. These are all places where they, you know, they realize the value of the filmmaking dollar, and I've, I've brought that um, policy into play. Tony, Danny, and um, uh, the, is it the film? Um, National, film National Film Authority. Na National Film Authority have, you know, done the work, uh, put together a very comprehensive plan to propel Ghana into the forefront. Um, it needs to be robust, it needs to be com com um, competitive to the rest of the, the, the world, but we believe for sure, and I know you believe this too, it's been part of your legacy that you want to leave as well, that you know Ghana should step up in terms of attracting those filmmakers. So, you know, as we said uh, at, in the DC, I'd come and see you and present to you essentially just the, the parameters of what we need to do. In short, the work has been done. We've done a lot of the sort of understanding what international filmmakers need for Ghana specifically in tandem as we lay the ground for the studios. Um, I'm led to believe that there are some plans uh, for the studios, uh, some other studios to be brought to Ghana, which is fantastic, and you know, one should not cannibalize the other. But without, I think, the policy component, I think it's uh, safe to say that you, we could have as many studios as we want, but we will not have the filmmakers attracted here. So, um, I think one of the things to just highlight for you, you know, what I, I want to do personally myself, I have a film that I'm directing, um, and I'm hoping to bring that film, or at least some of that film, to shoot in Ghana. That film will be, I, I would say we would be here in December. We start shooting, we start pre-production in August. Some of the film, two or three weeks, will be in Ghana, say, by December. Hopefully, if we were to move with a fair wind and we were in agreement of what we could do in terms of the policy, we could case study my film as a, as a, a proof of concept. Um, I mean, you know, needless to say, it would take a, a, a lot of uh, collaboration to move quickly. However, it would, it would be very beneficial for us to show and to make an announcement to the world that Ghana is open for business. Here is the steps, the policies are in place, and we have actually bringing a film, um, one of the soil, I may say, to our country, and we're going to put our money where our mouth is. So in short, um, His Excellency, that's the plan. Um, we, you know, we're confident that you want to do the same as we do, but it's just a question of whether we can push this through with the relevant parties to um, make it happen. Now, I don't remember if you guys remember me speaking about Michael Pratt and how he was doing the same exact thing. In fact, he was amongst the first to speak out and detail his plans concerning building this massive studio here in Ghana. And during that video, I spoke about how so many people need to start doing exactly that, coming back to Ghana and investing. So it is great to see Idris like really taking on that job and coming back and considering Ghana for investments. This is a great thing for Ghana. 
And what he said during his meeting with the president is that he's trying to, you know, see Ghana into the future it was so powerful. And I say this all the time, it's going to take a collaboration of many people to bring Ghana to the state where it needs to be. And I feel like with these collaborations continuing to happen, of it coming and working together to build here in Ghana and to invest and to really just get Ghana on the right track is exactly what we need. And if more and more people like us stand up and do this, then we don't need no other nation for nothing. We as a people just have to stand up and continue to do this. So I'm so proud of Idris. I'm so proud of Michael for making this decision. And as we all know, it starts with conversations. And I know some people out there are like, oh yeah, but Melody, you know, people speak and they talk. And at the end of the day, nothing gets done or they renege on what they say they're gonna do. And we all know that that is a possibility and, and that could happen. But I like to say, let's always think positive and let's look forward to them actually fulfilling what it is that they say they are going to do. And it all starts with a conversation. That is how vision starts. That is how purpose starts. That's how it all begins is by writing down your vision and making it plain and also having a conversation about what you plan to do. That is an important, an important part in the process and the steps that need to be taken in order to get somewhere in the future. So I'm not at all concerned in the least bit about them getting together and just having a conversation because that is where it begins. I'm confident that they are going to do what it is that they say they are going to do because it is out of our hands and it is time for Ghana to rise. Ghana has been the underdog looked at crazy and the narrative for ghana is really turning around i'm telling you just give ghana some time next three four years ghana is gonna be something a force to reckon with trying to tell you and i'm not saying that because i'm here and i love ghana so much which i do but that's not the reason why i'm saying this i'm saying it because that is what i see that is what i foresee for the future of ghana ghana really being that strong powerhouse because ghana Listen, they don't play when it comes to their customs, their values, their traditions. They stand behind what they say. They say what they mean and they mean what they say. And that is what I absolutely love about the country of Ghana. And I feel like because of their value system and their strong beliefs and standing behind what they believe in is why they are going to be catapulted into the future and just be this big powerhouse. Ghana is getting somewhere. Everyone that's coming and flocking to Ghana to invest is getting somewhere. These people are not dumb and financially they are very smart because they see the investment opportunities here in Ghana right now and they're taking advantage of that. So we need more of us to follow suit, to come invest, buy property, invest in real estate. I'm telling you, if you do it now while the cost is low, you're going to be in a very good financial position in the future. If you wait and you're the last one to join the race, then you're going to find yourself buying things at an extreme amount of money because we know as things start getting popular, the more popular they become, the more expensive they become. So guess what? The more popular Ghana becomes, the more expensive Ghana is going to become. So now is the best time to get in and invest in whatever you can, whether that be land, whether that be some type of business, some type of infrastructure, find your niche. Stick with it and invest. I'm telling you, now is the time. Now is the time. If you miss this opportunity, you are going to be very upset at yourself for not taking the opportunity when you should have. And how many times have you looked back and been like, dang, I should have did that. Well, I wish I would have followed my thoughts. Something told me to do that. That is that. That's going to be that moment in the future if you don't invest in Ghana now. In the future, you're going to be you're going to be saying to yourself, man, I should have invested when things was two dollars. Now it's too late. Now it's too late because the ship has sailed. So don't be that late investor. Get in now while the cost is low. Find your niche and invest. I'm telling you, you will thank yourself later while you're on your way to the bank to collect them all of the many dollars that you have gained as a result of your investment that you have done here in Ghana. So this is an excellent step in the right direction for Ghana, as always. And I feel like we're kind of on that path of just making better decisions overall. Better decisions as a people and just better decisions as a government. And I really appreciate the fact that 
the president of Ghana is willing to sit down and have these conversations and consider all aspects and all dynamics of the matter from every angle and not just being biased or being closed-minded but really wanting to see the expansion of Africa which is so important coming from a leader so in order for the economy of Ghana to grow and develop and become something it has to be an open mind and a willingness to want to see that through so kudos to the current president for just having these conversations so let me know what you guys think. Drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this topic. And until next video, I will see y'all soon. In the meantime, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so every time I drop a new video, you are made aware. See you soon.